Hello and welcome back to another video. So after all the hype with 5G at the Apple event last year for the iPhone 12 series, I wanted to evaluate how good 5G is now and if it's improved over that period of time. In addition, we will talk about if it's worth buying a 5G phone versus a 4G phone. Last time around it didn't go so well for 5G, but this time there have been a couple changes and we're going to talk about everything you need to know. Today's test will be on Verizon's 5G nationwide network, and I've tested Verizon's 5G UW network, which is just insane, but it does have its limitations, and we'll talk about why I'm not testing that one for this video. But anyway, there's a lot to talk about, so let's get started with the test, and then we'll go over the results. Alright, as you can probably tell, there isn't a significant difference between LTE and 5G nationwide. I tested this in many areas around me, which is partially why I'm late to this video, but either way, the results had the same trend. It is worth noting, I've seen about a 25% increase in download speed for both networks since my last test, but ping and upload have been mainly unchanged. With that said, upload, download, ping don't seem to be much different between the two networks itself. This is likely due to Verizon's DSS implementation in order to push out low band 5G. Personally, I think that Verizon needs to focus on mid band and low band rather than high band, aka the 5G UW network. The majority of people won't get a consistent experience on 5G UW despite the insane speeds, but it can still be nice for some. In conclusion, 5G is still probably overhyped by the carriers, and don't worry if you have a phone without 5G right now, you don't have to go out and buy a 5G phone just for 5G and hopefully we see 5G improve in the future because I really do believe there's a lot of potential. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and peace.